Hello Year 7, Mr Williams here with your latest history lesson. In our last lesson we were looking at the causes of the English Civil War which started in 1642 and today we're going to look at the actual events of that war and we're going to, our big question is why the parliamentarians won that war. So you should be able to see my screen now, hopefully. So our big question is why did the parliamentarians win the English Civil War? And we've got a series of key words, which I think it would be a good idea if you pause this video and wrote down both the words and their definitions. So the first one is the divine right of kings. That's the belief that God has chosen who is king or queen. And that's a really key idea for today's lesson. Because if you believe that the king or queen is chosen by God, then people would have no right to um, criticise the king um, or to try and make decisions for him or even eventually to try and kill the king if you believe they've been chosen by God. Parliament, an idea we've looked at in previous lessons, that, are, that is politicians voted in by people to make decisions about their country and we saw that with Elizabeth that sometimes Parliament and kings or queens don't agree with each other about how best to, to run the country. And then the two different sides of the war, you've got the Royalists, also known as the Cavaliers, who were supporters of the King, and you've got the Parliamentarians, also known as Roundheads, who, hence the name, are supporters of Parliament. Our final keyword is the New Model Army, which was a trained army um, for the Parliamentarians, which was led by Oliver Cromwell, who's going to be a key figure in our next lesson. So, as well as our big question, a couple of other understanding questions we should be able to answer by the end of the lesson. How did the divine right of kings lead to the Civil War? And was the Parliamentarians' victory due to their strengths or the weaknesses of the Royalists? Our skills are cause and consequence. So, the English Civil War. Charles I, this fellow here with the fantastic beard and moustache, he was an unpopular king for a number of reasons. Firstly, he married a Catholic. We know from this whole topic that what, relig what type of Christian um, you are, what type of Christianity you stick to, either Catholic or Protestant, is really controversial. So in Charles I marrying a French Catholic princess, Henrietta Maria, that is going to annoy a lot of people. Um, because England at this point was a Protestant country. Um, and many people thought that because he'd married her that he, held, that he secretly held Catholic beliefs. Charles, as we mentioned before, he also believed in the divine right of kings. So he thought that God had chosen him to be king, so nobody could tell him what to do, um, and nobody could say that he was wrong, because he had God on his side. Um, and as a result of this belief, um, he completely ignored Parliament, those voted in politicians, for 11 years. And he even tried to arrest members of Parliament. Okay, and this was like the final straw for Parliament. They felt they'd been ignored for ages. They set a rule in place to say that we have to be listened to at least once every three years, um, which is still not very much at all. Um, and then he tried to arrest them. So he proved that he was a tyrant. One of our key words from last lesson, a tyrant is somebody who makes the decisions on themselves and doesn't listen to anybody else. So to show that the war was starting, in 1642, King Charles raised his standard, which was uh, another name for a large flag, in Nottingham. Um, and you can see, if you go into town, there's a plaque on um, King Charles Street, which is right near Nottingham Castle, um, and you can see the point where um, the Civil War started. And the war was a really bloody one. It led to the deaths of 10% of the English male population. So, we've got two different sides of the war, parliamentarians versus royalists. So on one side, the parliamentarians, also known as roundheads, and that's because of the shape of their helmets, which we'll look at in a moment. They thought that the king should not be allowed to do whatever he wanted. Um, they, they, want, they believe that parliament should be listened to, and it isn't right for one man to act as a tyrant. And on the other side were the royalists, who were also um, called the cavaliers, and they supported the king. And you can see here that... Um, Part of the, you can see that there were some areas that were controlled by the royalists, and there were some areas, the light grey, that were controlled by the parliamentarians. And part of the reason that um, this war starts is because Charles is tr is he's asking for loads of money, he's asking for loads of taxes because he wants to go into Scotland um, and have wars with um, with Scottish people over what kind of religion they serve and, he, and a lot of people think he's maybe trying to make Scotland more Catholic because he was perhaps a secret Catholic. Now you might go, oh, I wonder what I would be, whether I would be a parliamentarian or a royalist and that's an interesting question to ask 
But the reality is that most people didn't get to choose who they fought for. They would, most people at that time were really, really poor um, and they would have that decision made for them by their landowner, by the wealthy landowner where they lived. So as a result, you could be on a completely different side from your family. Um, that would be really, really difficult, wouldn't it? You'd have no choice which side of a war you're fighting on. And just because your brother or your father lived um, in another part of the country, they might be on an opposite side um, of this civil war. So, the key moment for a lot of people when we look at the Civil War is two years into it um, and the parliamentarians change their approach and they create this army of trained soldiers called the New Model Army. And this army is led by this man here, Oliver Cromwell, who is so important because he is going to become the leader of England, um, which we will see in our next lesson. So, the New Model Army, and this is their, this is their uniform, you can see their round helmets, hence the round heads. They were led by Cromwell and their soldiers were properly trained, they were given wages and a uniform, and they believed they were fighting for God. A lot of New Model Army were from the Puritan religion, which is a type of Protestantism, which is what, what Cromwell is, a really strict version of Protestantism. Um, and they believed that because they, they wanted England to stay Protestant, they didn't want um, it to become more Catholic like they felt that Charles I was, they, were so, they felt really confident because they felt they had God on their side. And the New Model Army were really successful. They controlled London, England's capital, and the surrounding areas. So they sort of controlled the heartland of England. Now, we could focus on a couple of um, different battles, but we're just going to focus on one, and, and that is the Battle of Naseby, which happened in 1645. So this New Model Army, this trained army, defeated Charles in 1645 at the Battle of Naseby, and this led to victory for Parliament in the Civil War. This battle only lasted three hours, but most of the royalist foot soldiers were killed. And after the fighting, Charles knew that he could not win the Civil War anymore. So he fled from the battle and went into hiding. So he went into hiding in Scotland, which he think, but where we, we know that he's gone to battle with Scotland and he's been, um, he's been trying to change their religion before, so it might not have been the best place to hide. And that was proven. In 1646, after he surrendered, the Scots sold him to Parliament for just 400 quid. I think that was the cost of my first car. Um, six, six weeks later, that's what they um, are um, receiving um, from Parliament in order to hand him over to the parliamentarians. And it was an eventful next couple of years for King Charles. In 1647, he was put into prison, but then he escaped in 1648 and was recaptured. And they're in this, the parliamentarians are in this difficult situation because as much as a lot of them don't believe in the divine right of kings, they're a bit like, oh, can we kill a king? Is that, if a king has been put in by God, are we going to go to hell? Are we going to be, um, are we going to be going against God if we kill a king? But the decision was made, and on Tuesday the 30th of January 1649, as shown by this picture, King Charles I was beheaded. And there's a fancy word for the killing of a king or a queen, um, which is not one of our keywords, but I thought a good one um, to mention. That's called regicide. So regicide was committed on um, the 30th of January 1649, and King Charles I was dead. So... You've listened to me talking, you've had a look at the slides, you can um, go back over those. You've got some comprehension questions, some quick quiz questions to answer. And this should, these should take you about one sentence, some of them will be just one word answers. So, A, why did Charles I ignore Parliament? Why, why did he do that? B, in which city did the English Civil War begin? We should get that definitely. C, why were the parliamentarians also known as roundheads? D, how did most people decide what side of the Civil War they were on? E, who was the leader of the new model army? F, why were the New Model Army successful? Give at least two reasons. G, which important battle happened in 1645? H, how much did the Scots sell King Charles I for? And I, what happened to King Charles I in these years? 1646, 1647, 1648 and 1649. You need to write something for each of those years. So you might want to pause, you might want to go back in the video, get all of those answers done and then come back for your second task. Okay, hopefully you've done those quiz questions. Then task two is you've got to read through these cards and put them into two separate categories. One of them is parliamentarian strengths. Okay, so things that the parliamentarians have done well. And on the other side is royalist weaknesses. And I've put a table on your next slide to help you categorise them. You could do your own um, in your um, in your books, or if you're doing it on um, if you're doing it on um, Google Slides. 
Um, so let's give an example then. Let's look at this one here. King's Char King Charles was too scared to make key decisions. Now that is clearly a royalist weakness. So if you look at this table here, you're going to put that one on there. Now you don't need to write these out in full. You can just bullet point them. Okay, so some, that one's not too, not too long. So you might just write King Charles too scared to make decisions. You would put on your royalist weakness side. Um, but if you've got a longer one, like this one here, Parliament's commanders were extremely good. Cromwell and Fairfax were superior to the royalist officers. Okay, I think you would probably put that on parliamentarian strengths, although there is a little bit about royalist weaknesses. So I would just cut that down to saying, um, on this side here, Parliament, com uh, Parliament commanders like Cromwell and Fairfax were good. That would be all you need to put for that. So go through and put all of those cards into the correct part of the table. And then finally, we always finish with a paragraph. Your task three is to write a paragraph answering the question, why did the parliamentarians win the English Civil War? It's our big question for the lesson. So you need to write a brief paragraph where you answer that. And I want you to use the sentence starts to help you, um, if you if you feel you need them. So you've got, I think the main reason the parliamentarians won the English Civil War was because of either their strengths or the weaknesses of the royalists. Okay, choose one of those to start your um, start your paragraph. Then, for your evidence, look back at your table uh, and, and use some of the evidence from there. You don't need to use everything on your table; just choose one or two examples um, of what made the, either the parliamentarian strong or what made the royalist weak. And then say why you think that reason is more important than the other. So, tell me if you've chosen parliamentarian strengths. Tell me why you think that's more important than royalist weaknesses. Okay, so just a reminder then, here are your three tasks. You've got to complete the comprehension questions. Um, you need to complete the table, parliamentarian strengths and royalist weaknesses. Remember to summarise, you don't have to um, write everything out in full. And then you need to finish off with a paragraph. You need to hand that all of those tasks in via Google Classroom before Friday. If you've got any questions, put them on um, the messages on Google Classroom or you can email your teacher directly. And my email address is on the screen. Okay. Well, I hope you have a fantastic week. I look forward to marking your work on Friday um, and I'll see you very soon. Bye bye.